like to introduce uh, our panelists briefly. Uh, we have Dr. Anupam Srivastava, who is Professor and HOD, Ras Shah and Vashadi Bhatma, National Institute of uh, Ayurveda Jaipur. And formerly he was uh, uh, Director of uh, uh, RAV, which is Rashtri Ayurveda Vidyapeet, that is National Academy of Ayurveda uh, in Delhi. And he has been uh, honored with the Pratik by Ramdu Foundation, Ramdhun Foundation, and is an expert member of the Executive Committee on Ayurveda Ahar and uh, DNC Act Amendment Committee, and a lot more. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Saket with us from IIT, Senior Manager, Business Development, CSR Grants, Technology Transfer, Strategic Partnership at IIT Delhi. And uh, Dr. Saket Chattopadhyay is an exemplar of the harmonious confluence uh, of science and business. And his dedication to molecular biology, his keen understanding of the marketing management, and a wealth of experience in incubation, startup, and partnerships. So he's also with us with his insights that he would share with us. And uh, we also have uh, Shri Sanjeev Mariwala ji, is Executive Chairman and MD, Omni Active Health Technologies. And he has been, uh, he's the founder president of the Association of Herbal and Nutraceutical Manufacturers of India. Is member task force for nutraceutical industry under the chairmanship of principal scientific advisor of the PM. And previously, he held presidentship of India's Pepper and Spice Trade Association and a lot more. He had been CEO and MD of Concord Ingredients Limited. So, welcome you, sir. And uh, we also have. Um, Dr. Vijayendra Prakash ji is Head Regulatory Corporate Affairs, Himalaya Wellness Company. And Dr. Vijayendra plays an has played an important role in combining scientific endeavors with regulatory demands. He has been involved in handling regulatory mechanisms and deliverance accordingly in India, including Office of DCG, Ministry of Ayush, FASAI, Ministry of Forest and Environment. Welcome you, sir. And we also have Dr. Harthi, a brother, colleague is, uh, with uh, All India Institute of Ayurveda currently, and uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar Harthi. He is currently working as Associate Professor, Department of Swasthya Vritta at All India Institute of Ayurveda, New Delhi. And he is a specialist in Ayurveda diet and lifestyle. And uh, he has a teaching experience of more than two decades to undergraduate and postgraduate students of Ayurveda. Hum log Ayurveda aur Ayush mein jin adhunik vigyan ke saath mila kar jo aage badhne ki baat karte hain, to Ayur Genomics jaise kshetra mein bhi Dr. Harthi ka jo hai, unka project aur unke visheshagita rahi hai. Our project raha hai, Ayur Genomics Project, Identification of Genomic Correlates of Prakriti in Healthy Individuals from Dravidian Population of North Karnataka. So, this project will be in the CSIR. So, you So, you are welcome. Thank you. And the discussion of this discussion is that Basically, we are uh, focusing our objective. Uh, I can say we can underline the objectives uh, as uh, nutrition, creating awareness, accelerating growth of Ayush startups and innovation, trade promotion, quality assurances, and collaboration and networking. Is in objectives ko dhyan mein rakhte huye hi ye jo panel hai apna aaj ka wo yahan par ham logon ke saath hai aur unke apni jo visheshagita hai unka jo lamba anubhav hai jo unka vistrit varied jo unka anubhav hai uska lab ham sab ko milega is brief introduction ke saath main sabse pehle amantrit karna chahunga dr anupam shrivastava ji ko unke opening remarks ke liye 
हाँ से भी कर सकते हैं एज यू लाइक थैंक यू संजय देव जी मंच को प्रणाम स्पर्ट्स को प्रणाम हमारे सामने बैठे मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुष के डी सर डायरेक्टर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुष एक्सपर्ट्स फ्रॉम एफ एस एस आई आयुर्वेदा सेल ऑफ एस एस आई एक्सपर्ट फ्रॉम निफ्टन और माई कलीग्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड ये आहार का सत्र है तो माँ अन्नपूर्णा को प्रणाम करना शायद हमारी जिम्मेदारी होती है और माँ सरस्वती को प्रणाम करना तो इसलिए आवश्यक है कि ज्ञान की बातें हैं रियली आई एम थैंकफुल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई पे माई सिंसियर रिगार्ड्स एंड अप्रिशिएशन टू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फूड प्रोसेसिंग एंड ऑल्सो टू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुष फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दिस सेशन स्पेशली डेडिकेटेड फॉर द फूड एंड स्टार्टअप्स विच इज नीड एन आवर आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू सेक्रेटरी आयुष एंड माई वाइस चांसलर हु हैज परमिटेड मी टू स्पीक ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म एंड थैंकफुल टू संजय दी गिविंग ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स दो आई अंडरस्टैंड दिस स्पॉर्ट्स आर मोर मच मोर बेटर नॉलेज एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द थिंग्स टू मी इफ यू टॉक अबाउट आर विद दिस टू दिस सेशन नर्चरिंग ग्लोबल वेलनेस आयुष आहार न्यूट्रोसिटिकल टू मी लुक इट लुक्स लाइक द थ्री कंपोनेंट्स फर्स्ट डेफिनेटली द ग्लोबल वेलनेस सेकेंड माई मोस्ट फेवरेट वन आयुर्वेद आयुष आहार आयुर्वेद आहार वट यू कॉल टू मी आयुष आहार इज अ ब्रॉड टर्म वी विल डिस्कस ब्रीफली ब्रीफली आई विल शेयर माई एक्सपीरियंस ऑन आयुर्वेद आहार एंड न्यूट्रोसिटिकल विच इज अ नीड ऑफ आवर आई वुड बी टॉकिंग एक्सटेम्पोर बिकॉज आई डिडेंट ब्रिंक एनी प्रेजेंटेशन वट द you know my knowledge journey what i have acquired why i have i have learned i would be sharing it is not a preaching it is not presentation simply the sharing of the thoughts which which could be beneficial to you people if you talk about the nurturing the global wellness wellness term though appears to be new but to me it is not new the root, roots are old and it becomes more prominent it become more relevant in current the times the pandemics are coming either sars or covid what you call so it is a, we all understand it is a multi multi focal multi component word is wellness and wellness is now compounding in many ways we all understand it is opt, optimal stage of the health yes is multi dimensional could be you may call social wellness it may be physical wellness it may be spiritual wellness there are on and on roughly we classify in eight wellness i am not going all the, all those details and yes definitely it has a holistic approach for all that and it changes uh, you see the changes when you travel across the boundary of the country the concept of the wellness may vary from the europe and it may vary to the uh, asia so wellness you can't be defined it is a it, it and it varies also with the time global wellness if you talk global wellness ayurveda has long indian system even have a long long understanding of the wellness sarve bhavanti sukhina sarve vantu niramaya this all has been said long back So yes, we have been always promoter and propagator of the global wellness and global uh, good health. And one again, a sloka comes from the Shushut. Though it is for the good health, some dosha, some agni, some dhatu, malkriya. We all understand. These these have been already been talked in detail about the wellness and global platform. Yes, as DGs we all understand. As DG three that talks exclusively about the about the health and the wellness. And as DG two, one, two, three, and six, you see. these these are the sectors which are somehow intermingled also where the stg3 exclusively talks about the health and wellness where is one and two talk about the poverty and the hunger they are they are somehow somehow they are all related and definitely the sdgs as basically the underlying driven power underlying driven power which the coherence among the activities of the different sectors sectors concerned with and this this if you see the current pandemic the stgs goals do it varied but the many of them like tuberculosis that all has been addressed successfully and it is being pushed also even if you refer in terms of the global wellness we can recall the who supported global uh, conference on health promotion where the geneva chapter especially which has talked about the five actionable points that those five actionable point where among universal health coverage leverage the economy helping the people so these were the areas where upon the global wellness has been more focused more relevant 
and in terms these are the these are the these are the you may call the policy matter if you talk about the in terms of the overall the global economy if you see the global economy of the wellness it goes some something out about this there are different data are available if you talk about it goes 4.2 uh, trillions and it it is projected to be around 11 to 11 to 12 it means it 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 appears it has been reported to a cumulated growth rate of double digit that goes about 10.9 around something it is plus and it this all global you you see the global business it revolves around the different fetches this could be personal beauty care it could be complementary and traditional systems products also which plays around 360 billion market personal beauty care market if you see in those studies it had been 1 billion so there are there are there are ample chances for the players for the entrepreneurs for the startups for this uh, this new area not new but as emerging area you may call and yes it has it has the, it has its own if you and i'll analyze it has its own strength stone weakness stand on this thing uh, so if you do the swot analysis what you will found the strength definitely the strength to us yes the traditional systems be it Ayurveda, be it Siddha, be it Yunani. Yes, we have we have a strength of the traditional system of medicine. Yes, we can offer state of art of these institutions which could offer such wellness practices which can offer the good services. And even yes, we 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 have we we have we are a time complaint, the lesser time and definitely cost effective. So this could be strength of the wellness if you talk about in terms of the India. And the weakness, yes, there exists a weakness for this wellness area. It could be like this. Still, the inadequate, inadequate the provisions for the made for the legislative provisions. Yes, there it are. They are being, the provisions are being developed even for the purpose of the you may call the medical value tourism. This could be, but I am happy to share, and most of you would be knowing. That yes, ministry have taken initiative for the Ayush visa. In the recent past, the ministry have taken the initiative of Ayush visa. Where, where it could it could facilitate the medical value tourism, wellness tourism also, and we all understand that currently what is happening in the country, the people are coming for secondary wellness programs. They are coming for the visiting and they are taking some wellness courses, the fun program. But but once the Ayush visa comes in the picture, picture it gives you an opportunity, it gives you an, an chance for the enhancement of the primary wellness seekers or the primary wellness people. So wellness appears to be a, a something, an area which needs to be focused, which needs to be addressed at a, at a society at large. We, uh, we at platform, we could invite the, the, our companies, our, our service providers and it could be, and yoga, definitely we understand the yoga, yoga plays an, and a very important role. The service sector like yoga, like panchkarma, this, this could be an, a, an area which could contribute from Indian side to attract the, 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 the population. Indian population and also the world diaspora towards the India and if you talk in terms of the exports driven economy they are definitely which depends which will def definitely will be supported by the yogas and panch karmas and definitely the traditional system of medicine which is a strength of our strength. With, with another point which I, I would like to highlight is we uh, I, Irish Ahar if you talk in terms of the legislation basically if you talk the legislation Ayushahar, yes, Ayushahar is a broad concept. Ministry, with the help of uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, FSSI, Ministry has recently, a year, not recently, you may say a year before, Ministry has uh, brought the legislation that is Arveda Ahar, which talks exclusively. The purpose, the purpose of that, ki there are so many ingredients are there, there are so many plant items, items are there which are falling in a, both of the category. And a certain doses, it falls in the category of the uh, food and a certain doses fall in the category of the uh, diet, uh, medicine. So con considering even then there are the, some plants are there, some food items are there which exclusively could be used as a food. And earlier ministry has already, already shared a list of such plants to the FSSI which could be taken as a plant based nut nutraceutical which can, comes under the schedule 4. So this considering all and thus offering the goodness of this Ayurveda to the broader mass. What happens in a, if you talk about the global platform, our food products, our food products are traveling across. Maybe by the name of the uh, uh, supportive food, maybe by the name of traditional drug. 
So, for making and these even in the country also when you travel across, there are the some uh, Ayush khichdis are there, some Ayurveda khichdis are there, some drinks are there. Even the people across the boundaries are taking the patent on the lattes and different lattes and all that. Where the ingredients that are with us, the ingredients that are prove that have a proven effective role for those purposes, they are being sold to bring that international commerce, bringing making the quality products across the country and in the country making a serious provisions. Say if you, you are during the recent pandemic you have experienced there are the market was flooded with many food products like say golden milk. We everybody knows the golden milk. But if you add 2 grams of the uh, uh, curcumin haldi or you add the 5 grams of the haldi in 250 milligrams of the milk it, it becomes the golden milk. For those just making a quality parameters, to making it testing protocols, what happens many a times, we just we just add at a minute quantity. So we a provision has been made by the export from the industry, by taking the views of the administrators, by the taking from the social person, that take involving the people from the food area. So ministry has come up with a provision of the Arvida Ahar. And I'm happy to share the ministry have taken the initiative of and it is a th I am thankful to FSSI also who has permitted to making a cell over there. In FSSI, food says, uh, FSSI, we have made a IU cell wherein probably our expert is sitting in front of me. Dr. Slehenata is there. She has, uh, she has been posted and very sooner, very sooner I would like to share on this platform, very sooner the provisions of the licensing for these Ayurveda food product, Ayurveda Ahar will come in a picture. Hopefully, we are, uh, we, are, uh, we are presuming to start by the month of January. For this purpose, a lot of things, background activities are being done. We are making a food compendium because it is an entirely new area. The people could jump like this. There are different provisions to whom you will call Arveda, what you will be provision, what will be the licensing provision, a lot of details. And we are also making some satellite conferences for that also. So, this is a one of the emerging, emerging field whereupon the, the goodness of Arveda could be availed by the seekers, the pub, uh, public liking such products and also it, be, it could be an uh, avenue for the industry also to work upon this area. This may, this may give a new uh, this opening of that. If you talk, if you talk uh, nutraceutical, coming to the last point, the nutraceutical, we all understand nutraceutical is a which product which, uh, which offer you the physiological benefit and the good health. You see the current scenario, especially the pandemic area, pandemic time, the, the volume, the business of the nutraceutical has, as per the uh, data available with us, may not be the legitimate data, but is a market study is there from 23 to, uh, to 2030, where the, it was a 362 in 20, uh, 23 billions, it is assumed to be to reach to be 700 billions. So this gave another the CAGR growth of 9%. And there also there are the products and there are the ingredients. Where are the products appearing? Our products and especially if you see the growth of plant based product, that growth is experienced as a 45%, 15%. And to 15 to uh, 15, 12 to 15%. So this again gives the enhanced acceptance, enhanced curiosity, enhanced vigilance about such product, especially the plant-based product, especially the Ayush ingredients. So this is an opportunity. To me, it looks like an opportunity. We can wear upon, to dwell upon, and we can take it forward. With this word, I, I, I think I, I was able, I, not, I was not fully able to pitch the pitch, to pitch the exact what is going to be delivered. But yes, it could be taken as a reference point for the other experts to develop on. I am, I, am, I am confident the experts from IIT, from industry, from the academia will be definitely delivering much more better and they will, good, they will give the insight so that the society at large and the participant at large could be get benefited. Thank you, thank you, thank you Sanjay Dev giving the opportunity to talk upon. Thanks sir. Thanks a lot, Ampam ji. आपका अनुभव और आपका जो काम का जो विस्तार है उसको आपने जो आज की जो परिस्थिति है और जो फ्यूचरिस्टिक एक सिनेरियो है उसको भी बहुत बेहतर तरीके से सामने रखा और एक बेहतर ओपनिंग रिमार्क 
हम सब के लिए दिया थैंक्स अलॉट एंड नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर साकेत चट्टोपाध्याय एंड सो यू कैन स्पीक फ्रॉम देयर ऑल्सो ओके Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I am Dr. Sagit Chaturpadya. Incidentally, I also had a startup company of mine where I produced spirulina-based protein energy bars. So, spirulina, most of you probably know that it's a blue-green algae and it has very high amount of proteins in it. So, 50% of the dry weight sometimes is the pure form of protein. Now, I start with one small question to the audience because I want to judge the the level of understanding of them. can you think about a 5000 year old concoction in ayurveda that has probably more than 30 or 40 prebiotic fibers in it and probably most of us has consumed th that particular product a herbal formulation that you might have taken when you were a child and it has got more than 20 to 30 prebiotic fibers in it okay. you got it you got it it's an amazing thing that you know the 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 sages of our our ayurvedic system they understood that these prebiotic fibers are actually required by the gut bacteria and it's highly beneficial for the of the the gut ecosystem and at this moment the the entire world is waking up to this you know gut microflora so with that i will start my 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 talk so uh little bit about the organization that i belong to so fitt foundation for innovation and technology transfer it is one of the pioneering organizations a ngo that started supporting startups right from 1992 so far we have supported thousands of startups we have been instrumental in providing technology transfers to the startups that is technology transfer is essentially a startup coming up with a patent and that patent is basically turn to the the industry so they take up those particular technologies at a larger scale so they can scale it up similarly we have done so much of research and development work more than 1000 research and development projects has been conducted uh, along with the the professors of iit as well as the industry sponsored projects that has been conducted at iit so we have been in this particular business for the last 30 years we know what we want to do and uh, this opportunity of ayurveda and startups is a very good combination because ayurveda offers so much for the startups and i'll come up in in the in the following slides about that the startup ecosystem is very very fluid and they can come up with innovations and frugal innovations very quickly compared to the the giants the giant companies now ayurveda the entire information of that particular thing is already there all we have to do is you know aggregate those startups and come up with solutions compare those previous data that we already have put it into trials and come up with modern versions of those particular things so this is a life this is a science of life i studied life science but surprisingly we already had the science of life one gardener if he or she wants to take care of a plant he or she is not going to think only about the water or the manure he has to think 360 degree around that particular plant if it's growing if there is a shade required if if there is pruning is required something is required so he has he or she has to think a 360 degree angle from that particular point of view and our sages our scientists of ancient times they actually understood this particular thing that whatever the problem is there there has to be a root cause for that particular thing at this moment there are symptomatic treatments in allopathy but they understood that there is a holistic approach to that if you are having a a stomach pain it could be because of depression so you have to go to the core of that particular problem and ayurveda actually comes up with those kind of solutions to that a uh, little bit about the the association that i had so whenever i used to go to exams 5 or 10 days before that i used to take these kind of pills uh, uh medavatis sankapushtis mentats and all those things so that enhances the brain power and i have personally experienced that you know that memory gets enhanced and you get you know relief from stress so i can vouch for that thing that this kind of products actually work on a day to day basis and this is actually the theme of this particular conference that the food the kind of products that we are taking it has to come to the daily life into the daily habit of the people so that it can benefit the masses 
so uh, uh, we know that this particular thing is already there in our in our text in our in our you know folklore all we have to do is bring it back in a modern version so that the people and the, the young generation the, the people who are you know going to the colleges who are in the schools they can think of it from their cultural perspective they can think of this particular product for example i can say that in a a dabur hajmola now nobody would think about a hajmola 2000 years ago in the form of a tablet they used to give concoction they used to have you know some some liquid solutions and all those things so they had to come up with a version an iteration for that particular thing so similarly for the modern times we have to come up with a modern iteration of those particular the 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 jewels that we have already with us and modern science modern medicine absolutely this particular ayurvedic things can be molded to the outcomes of the modern sciences whatever the 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 outcomes of this particular uh, the the findings they can be actually augmented into the modern science and the modern medicines even doctors can take it to the allopathy doctors can take it and i'll give you an example how allopathy actually had taken up one particular example of that uh, globally it's a huge huge market and uh, it's increasing as we speak Uh, essentially the last time that i found out that it was probably 24 billion dollar business around the world and it's it keeps on increasing each sector is specific it it has its own dynamics uh, internationally there is a craze for ayurvedic products especially the organic ones have, having you know all the certifications and all those things and certification and quality control is one of the biggest challenges at this moment especially for the small players the startup companies and they should be aware they should be made aware of all the facilities that is that is available for them to come up with products that is of international quality so uh, as i was you know uh, talking about these things i think that th there has to be harmony of mind soul and body unless and until we mind soul and body in the sense that you know the modern aspect of the medicines and the food as well as the, the previous whatever finding that our our ancient scientists had found out so we have to have a healthy balance of those kind of things and come up with products that is relevant to this particular generation now the place where i belong it belongs to entrepreneurs innovators startups they come up with frugal innovations they come up with innovations out of the box thinkings so i think that uh, blending latest technologies like artificial intelligence like genomics and other you know collaborative platforms they can be utilized for developing products they can be used to collaborate with international partners as well and come up with solutions that no one even thought about it artificial intelligence as as of now is one of the biggest sectors and uh, the the kind of uh, the the solutions that deep mind one of the best you know artificial intelligence companies they are coming up with solutions that nobody even thought about like having a protein structure done within a few days instead of several years and it has more than 60 70% accuracy so it's a huge huge achievement that within in silico analysis you can come up with the with a protein structure that is 70 80% accurate that is a huge jump in terms of development of vaccines in terms of development solutions to alzheimers this kind of things what are the challenges probably we all know of course the the international flavor is essentially you know they have they frown at our products the quality of the products of course i'm not talking about the big players but the startups who are coming up with you know innovative products they have to understand that these kind of things are actually being faced by the startups of the, of the world you have to come up with brilliant solutions you have to come up with all kind of quality assurances you have to start that reverse engineering right from the beginning you have to come up with some solutions where you you can you are completely sure that these particular products are organic where this particular the there is a heavy metal pesticide already there on the on the field or not so select those particular areas where there is probably least resistance to this kind of pesticides uh, whether that particular area has never been irrigated or not that kind of place you can select at the starting point so that these kind of problems do not crop up quality control quality assurances of course the awareness level is not that great i mean government is doing its ample you know uh, the at at its maximum level they are doing but it has to reach to the ground uh, at the grassroots levels there are so many innovations in the in the tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, i can take off uh, one example where in you know, one lady Uh, who has been funded by indian engine network uh, she, uh, she has come up it's the company is called ai moon so they have come up with solutions for vitiligo one kind of you know psoriasis kind of solution for the skin 
so they use some traditional medicines from gujarat they came up with some scientific evidence that yes it works and at this moment they have been funded multiple million dollars and they are expanding internationally because internationally this uh, this uh, this kind of skin disease is very much prevalent so so this kind of traditional knowledge is already there we already have that particular goal all we have to do is take it into a modern perspective come up with brilliant products and then take it to the world that okay this this kind of traditional knowledge was already there we have come up with evidence evidence based solution has to be there lots of opportunities for startups as i was talking um the wisdom of ayurveda coupled with all the modern sciences biochemistry molecular biology even clinical trials this has to be done and if you can come up with brilliant solutions to that sky is the limit there are so many startups and i take some examples of some startups which actually became so big within no time think about dabar think about himalaya think about you know patanjali how they have expanded across the globe and how those this particular brands are respected because of their scientific studies and the products that they say that we claim you know chavan prash actually claims that it it boosts immunity it's on the on the front of the that particular pack so they have done clinical trials multiple times and then they are claiming this particular thing similarly there i'll come up with some other clinical trials that has been very successful and i'll uh, jump quickly uh, all india institute of uh, ayurveda uh, uh, this this is one of the you know, premier organizations that that can support the startups in this particular ecosystem they usually go for startup challenges they have some funding mechanisms also and of course ayush food innovations ayush bioinstrumentation ayush it solutions these are one of the biggest fields at this moment so any startup who wants to get this kind of you know primary information they can go to those websites of course startup india also has several challenges related to this kind of things and every year there might be coming up with modern versions of those so i would request if there are some startups or innovators here so they should always keep on checking these kind of websites so there is ample amount of knowledge all you have to go to the right website and come and just you know click the right links there uh yeah. of course this is from ahar and uh, that makes me nostalgic because i am a very avid practitioner of yoga so i i do the traditional medicine this traditional uh, yoga of yogoda satsang society of uh, yeah, paramansa yogananda so uh, i know that uh, through the, the the books that uh, i have read by him there is several koshas of of existence the first kosha is uh, thul, uh, this is uh, anna kosha followed by sthula kosha that is our body and then there is linga kosha that is the light body and then there is karana kosha the the cause causal bodies and all those things so the first primary the kosha is essentially anna so you have to think about that how primary this particular thing is whatever you eat that is transformed into thoughts and that thought actually shapes you over the years uh i was a non vegetarian but i converted myself into uh, a a strict vegetarian and sometimes i take garlic but even that i try to avoid so uh, this is this is a very very interesting field that if you just modulate your food in terms of the the traditional knowledge of of our country you should be able to come up with you know some visible your body is itself a, a laboratory you can come up with some solutions that you can see within yourself the changes within yourself there are a uh, uh, scope in ready to drink uh, juices and of course capsules and nutritional powders then uh, immunity boosting stuff during the covid we have seen so many immunity boosting stuff and they have actually worked uh, skin care products absolutely they are actually ruling at this moment the entire market is being ruled by this kind of beauty products diet plans of course sir was talking about this and uh, i think that diet plans will be the biggest factor the the selling point later on uh, the biggest benefit of encouraging startup ecosystem essentially is you know moment you conduct this kind of acceleration program this kind of you know awareness programs camps workshops road shows what happens is that the the big innovators lying in tier 2 tier 3 interiors of the country they get activated some of you know the brilliant innovations that is already lying within the villages of this country they might be able to see the light of the day and they should be able to come out and speak their voice and all it needs is basically a modern rendition of that particular traditional knowledge maybe a grandma's recipe or something which actually works somebody thought about this you know uh, a, a biofilm reduction sort of thing and uh, balsamic vinegar 
and some, some, some concoction of garlic solution that has been shown to reduce the, the biofilm within the gut and that was lying in Egypt. That Egyptian recipe has been used by modern science to reduce the biofilm within the system and it works, it works very well. Uh, these are some of the success stories, uh, Akiva Superfoods again these are into the, this drink shots and me is into the female uh, uh, sections of, of uh, you know during the menstrual health and beverages related to that. Oziva is entirely plant based nutritional products. Uh, Gynoveda again with you know AI based Ayurvedic diagnostics of you know disorders especially the female disorders. Nirogam is a marketplace so you know Ayurvedic doctors can log in there, even the patients can log in there, they can interact and they can even order those particular recipes based on that particular platform. Kapiva is also doing great, they are into juices and ghees and honeys. Similarly Auric, Kama Ayurveda and Forest they are into the you know the, the beauty sections. Uh, this is one of the classic cases, IOS 64, most of you must be knowing there that you know during the COVID time there was you know some, some American hint was there that malarial drugs are working. So somebody in our country thought that this particular drug might be also working. So they did in silico studies and they came out you know surprisingly that 35 of the 36 targets are being affected of this particular COVID virus and immediately those clinical trials were conducted and they came up with a particular solution and this particular drug was licensed to several uh, multinational companies and it worked very well along with the, the allopathic drugs as a synergistic effect. Uh, you, you'll be surprised that clinical trials has been conducted successfully in several of the, of the herbal tablets that we usually take and it has been shown clinically and anybody can actually say and claim that yes, these things actually work. For example, Brahmi, Bacopa monieri, it is shown to enhance your cognitive skills. It has been shown clinically. Similarly, Vitheria somnifera, Ashwagandha, Indian ginseng, that has been shown to reduce anxiety and stress. Similarly, Ashwagandha, Yashti Madhu, Guduchi, these kind of things, they have been shown clinically that they work pretty well. What is the call to action? Of course, uh, it should be introduced in, into our daily life. Everybody should try to inculcate it into their daily lives they should encourage it within their you know, peer groups. And of course, school courses should have a mandatory course in there. School is the formative stage of a particular of a person. The persona is developed in the school days. So if there is a mandatory course of even a six months, that can actually lead to respect for this particular field for the young generations. So in summary, I would say that uh, uh, India is a you know, global player. Startup ecosystem will do its best. Uh, because of you know there are more than 600 incubators technology business incubators in the country and they will be able to support all the innovators and startups who come up in this particular sector and India is one of the oldest civilizations probably the oldest civilization which is having this kind of knowledge and it is the responsibility of this kind of you know elder civilizations to take care of the world and I think that uh, uh, one small story I'll end it with that because I'm an author also um, there was one sage and there was one scorpion. So that sage was trying to save that scorpion, but it was stinging him. Somebody asked that, why are you doing that even if it's stinging you? He said that it's the basic nature of that particular organism to sting, but it is my basic nature to save. So that way we have to understand the, the situation of the whole world. Whatever is the situation, India has to lead this particular world. Thank you, Jai Bharat. Thanks a lot. Sky is the limit and a very specific, precise glimpse of that sky that uh, Dr. Chattopadhyay has provided. Thank you, sir. I will now ask Dr. Shiv Kumar Harti and this vishay pe, the topic that he has to deal with is Aish foods, nutraceuticals, fusion cuisine, exploring the health benefits, therapeutic properties of Ayush Ahar. Dr. Shiv Kumar Harti. Uh, thank you, Sanjay sir. Uh, respected dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, uh, learned audience. Uh, 
thank you. Thank you for the organizers giving an opportunity. Uh, so I'll be here for discussing on 10 minutes on Ayushahar, uh, exploring the health benefits, therapeutic properties of uh, Ayurveda. -ar. Next slide. Yeah, uh, as uh, Anupam Shivasa sir told about the holistic uh, medicine, uh, holistic system of five systems. So, five systems are mainly uh, the holistic systems of medicines, uh, which uh, mainly devote their healthcare towards the preventive healthcare. Previous. Yeah. Uh, so, if you talk about Ayurveda, various uh, preventive measures have been explained. For example, Dinacharya, we call it a daily regimen, night regimen, or a seasonal regimen, Sadhvrata, so code of conduct. So, we all talk about the uh, wellness concept. So, today, the entirely uh, the whole world is looking at a uh, uh, systems of Ayush for their holistic principles, especially in the area of uh, wellness and prevention of diseases. Uh, and one more thing, these regimens can be personalized uh, based on the body constitution, occupation, region or any other specific condition of the individual. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Uh, we all know that uh, Ayurveda says recommends these are the main three basic pillars of the health. One is the food, sleep and the lifestyle. And uh, especially Ayurveda has been given as a term called as this Mahabhaisajya, something equivalent to that of a medicine. Next. So, to talk about the scope of Ayushahar, uh, the global market of Ayushahar uh, is expected to grow at a CAGR of 8.8% .8 for the period of 2022 to 2028. Uh, until now, there are actually uh, two poles. Uh, one poles was uh, dominated by the pharmaceutical uh, market. The second was dominated by the wellness products. Now, uh, something in between the wellness and pharmaceutical called as a nutraceutical has emerged. Uh, especially since the era of the COVID-19 or a Russian-Ukraine conflict. So, there is a big, uh, huge scope for uh, nutraceuticals, functional foods, supplementations, especially when it comes to a traditional sleep of medicines. Next slide. So, I was talking about it, like uh, when we combine the pharmaceuticals and the uh, FMCGs, uh, we get a new market called as a uh, nutraceutical market in India. So, being a cusp of food, uh, Ayush and pharmaceutical, the regulated environment comes under the purview of uh, Ministry of Ayush and uh, uh, FSCI. Uh, this was what uh, Panupashu Assessor was talking about in the morning, about, uh, sorry, a uh, few uh, minutes back, about the Ayush R regulations. So, Ayush medicines globally, uh, they are sold under the uh, uh, label of dietary supplements. So, that is why there was a need for a separate category of Ayurveda Ahar, uh, which can regulate these uh, food products of Ayush. And that is why uh, the regulations were notified last year uh, regarding Ayurveda Ahar. And it defines as uh, what exactly is Ayurveda Har. If you come to the definition, it says that any food prepared in accordance with the recipes or ingredients as per the methods described in the authoritative textbooks of Ayurveda uh, listed under Schedule A. There are around uh, 68 books which have been listed under this Schedule A. So, any recipes which come out of these textbooks can be called as an Ayurveda Har. Uh, it includes also the products of the botanicals so in accordance with the concept of Ayurveda Har. Next slide. So, if you uh, have a small glance of recipes which have been present in various Ayurveda textbooks, this is an example of one of the Ayurveda texts of uh, Charaka Samhita. Uh, you get um, more than a half a um, half a thousands of recipes uh, which have been called as Peya, Yushas, Kshira Kalpana, Siddha Kalpana. So, around more than 500 uh, recipes you can have uh, from the one classical textbook. So, if you mix it around all the author textbooks, they go more than thousands. Uh, one of the preparations called as Saktu, which is very prominent in even in a day to day life, people take these Saktus. So, it is a uh, flour consisting of a grounded pulse cereals. It is usually mixed with water and taken in a form of drink, especially in the summer since this Saktu is taken. So, uh, previous, previous. So, there are some uh, Saktus which have been specially told for the disease conditions like respiratory disorders or digestive disorders. So, these uh, preparations come under the concept of nutraceuticals and have a huge market. Next, and coming to the Panaka Kalpanas, uh, Panaka is something or drinks Kalpanas, so are prepared from a sore or a non sour fruits. Example, there are, uh, we have uh, Amalaki Panaka, which has been published under by the Minister of Ayush. Then we have various other uh, Panakas, like Jeevanya Panakas, Vatadi Panakas. They have got their own uh, therapeutic benefits. Next slide. Manta Kalpanas, uh, this is uh, blending a, a, a Manta Kalpanas, something which you churn together. Churn, 
chanda mixtures uh, chanda medicines previous previous uh, uh, so there is one preparation called as karjuradi mantas uh, i put in a slide here similarly there are various other preparations called as baladi mantra trishnadi mantas karjuradi mantas etc next slide and uh, kshira paka kalpanas uh, which are mainly basically the main ingredient is the milk here and there are various preparations from these kshira kalpanas for example arjuna kshira paka used in cardiovascular system shatavari kshira paka bleeding disorders so various other uh, food preparations which have got their own therapeutic values uh, on the health this is one more uh, we have a preparation khada kambalikas where uh, they mix with buttermilk with the pulses we call it as khada khadi in the local traditional system so here so these when blended with the uh, ayurvedic traditional uh, ayurvedic herbal medicines they can become they become a nutraceuticals next slide so uh, i just gave a glimpse of this was just a glimpse of various ayurvedic culinary practice where of the various ayurvedic food preparation recipes which can uh, which have a huge uh, health benefits uh, when you talk of a uh, health benefits of these ayushahar there are various health benefits they act uh, some uh, act on digestive systems they help in di in digestion they promote healthy gut functions they are, some ayushahar can have a they can balance stress anxiety especially uh, the recipes which are mixed with ashwagandha brahmi etc and uh, enhancing immune function uh, we all know uh, about the various milk preparations lattes which came in the era of covid 19 boosting about immunity chavan prash was not available in those uh, days next managing inflammations improving joint health especially google etc preparations skin health next and uh, ayushahar can also support a weight management for, uh, uh, there are some uh, preparations in which include garcinic ambaja we call it as um, and google preparations liver detoxification improving sleep quality so ayushahar can have a multiple benefits on all the systems of uh, various systems next Uh, like i talked about the arjunic shira pak has got a very good role in cardiovascular health cognitive functions brahmi shankar pushpas uh, diabetic blood sugar regulations methis and the recipes prepared with methis and bitter uh, vegetables etc next hair scalp health thermal balance so these are various areas where people can really get benefit from ayushahar next slide so how can these uh, ayurveda super food foods uh, they can be a part of uh, international cuisines turmeric uh, we all know that it has been used in indian traditional uh, culinary practices age long so um, there are various other countries also where uh, turmeric is being used for example asian cuisines mediterranean cuisines they have been using term uh, they have been using turmeric in their cuisines so uh, it can be a part, i mean um, there are uh, for example the other one is the ghee uh, we have been using the uh, ghee uh, since age long western cuisines include butter uh, but various studies have proved that having a ghee has got a better beneficial than a butter one next similarly uh, there are uh, various foods can be prepared from ashwagandhas like smoothies ashwagandhas can be used in bakings uh, tulsis uh, various tea preparations come from tulsis and even tulsi fresh leaves can be can be a, a ingredient of a salads so this is how various ayurvedic super foods can be a part of uh, various international cuisines also next slide uh, amla one of the main ingredient of chavan prash various other preparations can be prepared like uh, talked also talked about amla panakas chutneys and trifalas next uh, moringa powder uh, we added uh, has got a very it's very nutrient one so fresh leaves can be added to the soups salads and cardamom can be used in a baking and even it has been used in various other uh, cuisines uh, for preparing biryanis pilafs etc next slide neem fenugreek in the same way next so in this way uh, the entrepreneurs or the innovators have got a lot of scope from ayurveda ahar or uh, the plethora of uh, ayurveda recipes which can, they can be converted into a uh, i mean uh, how can uh, it's up to the entrepreneurs or innovators how these recipes can be brought to the society uh, they may be a ready to eat foods or they may be some other forms where uh, they actually can serve a health purpose society so uh, at aiia we have uh, completed few research studies on these nutraceuticals one was Uh, we have prepared prakriti based herbal tea for diabetes at uh, um, the uh, then we have ojas bar then we have also tried on uh, chinchadi candy uh, which was which was had a very good result in increasing the hemoglobin in iron deficiency anemias and one of the recent study which was conducted was the cookies which it which was uh, enriched with astra shrinkla that is this is quadrangular is especially in case of osteopenia cases we could uh, find some very good results where there was a slight increase in the uh, bmd bone uh, mineral density too next 
So these are some of the ongoing uh, studies uh, which are at AWI on nutraceuticals. Uh, we are one of the studies going on region specific traditional foods in uh, under for undernutrition Uttarakhand area and uh, ragi urad laddu for as a uh, performing ability among uh, middle distance athletes and this product is even displayed at our at our uh, exhibition area here and some other studies which have been being called palasha pushp him uh, and its anti diabetic effect chavadi saktu biscuits for obesity then nutraceutic granules uh, prepared from drakshadi churn and evaluation of efficacy and management of uh, karshadri is under nutrition and uh, pancha nimbadi satta drink uh, in case of uh, pitta prakopa lakshana as per our uh, sharad ritu so these are the few uh, research studies that are ongoing now so in a short to summary to tell uh, ayurveda nutraceuticals or ayurveda ara has got a lot of scope uh, especially for the uh, you know, entrepreneurs entrepreneurs or uh, innovators can take a help of these things uh, new regulations and come up with a new market preparations thank you thank you one and all Thanks a lot, Shri Kumar ji. You finished well in time. Thanks again. Now I will present to you Sanjay Mariwala ji. Sanjay Mariwala ji, and his topic on which he is going to explain his experience and share his experience is market expansion strategies and exports. Please. good afternoon thank you very much for having me here today i appreciate this opportunity and uh, i'm going to um, i think we've heard lots of interesting uh, uh, discussions uh, already this afternoon about products concepts uh, the opportunities that exist and um, i'm going to look at it from the business uh, kaleidoscope to say uh, you know how do we look at uh, how does a business look at it and how have we looked at it as a business uh, uh, as a company and uh, how have we done what we've done and how can others do something similar or find their own way of doing something more in interesting and probably better um, i'm not going to get into statistics but i'm just highlighting a quick couple of few points that the markets are huge there are large opportunities we don't even need to quantify them we just need to go out there and grab some of those opportunities and i think that's one of the things we really have to focus on If we keep looking for data and analytics we will get you know we'll get caught into uh, paralysis of analysis i think we have large opportunities out there we need to go after them and we need to study the markets a little better in terms of content we need to study the matter in terms of consumer expectations we need to study the uh, uh, marketing capability and and tailor portfolio products that meet customer needs and consumer needs in each market that we want to focus on um we need perhaps we need a little bit of a thought in as a as a nation that we need a conceptual selling of 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 what we have and we have huge uh, uh, treasures here we we need to really conceptualize how we sell it how do we actually market india how do we market the the traditional knowledge package it in the modern india that we have today and how does today's science and technology provide us the opportunity to take these products out into more effective ways of taking them to the market um whether it's ayush ahar or whether it's nutraceuticals i think in both these opportunities we have seen these these uh, 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 examples in fact uh, if you if you talk about the nutraceutical sector it's grown in the last maybe 15 20 years and it's grown very rapidly and today we are probably doing about somewhere close to 7 or 8 billion dollars worth of business it can easily grow to about 100 billion dollars in terms of opportunity we need a few things that we need to rationalize maybe look at things a little more effectively we need to take a holistic view as a as a nation in about whether we look at things like you know our own market and and how products are differentiated between gst rates whether we look at uh, uh, you know creating a focus on the nutraceutical sector by providing some sort of a, um, um, a leadership from the government as well as the industry together and some effective uh, ways of of bringing more capacity and capability to be built in a pli scheme for example is something that has worked for many other sectors how do we examine that opportunity for the nutraceutical sector uh, i think this needs to be looked at one very interesting development the geopolitics that's changing across the world is also an interesting opportunity we should look at which is 
Um, China has been a very large supplier of products to, to the US market, which is one of the largest nutraceutical or alternative you know, products market. And today, uh, there is certainly a need for US to, you know, has gotten closer to India as a, as a nation. I think we have opportunities there. And what can we do to create China plus one or China alternate to China strategy? And I think, again, this requires a little bit of cohesive coming together, collaboration, and working together between the government and the industry. Somewhere along the line, we, 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 we may be stumbling along in our, our approach. Maybe we require a little bit of thought, may apply to uh, certain approaches, which is, you know, let's look at how do we talk the consumer language? How do we talk in the consumer language, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the language we use for our products? How do we make it relate to consumers that can understand it better? Simplify it, make it easy to understand, make it easy to accept and, and, and deal with, okay. Um, where we have great history, but history doesn't sell. It's science that sells. Okay. How do we convert it into science and how do we make it <coughs> clinically validated? How do we make, you know, evidence versus theory work? How do we make sure the claims sell? Claims are ones that, that, that make people want to buy. You know, consumers don't buy products. They buy benefits of the products. Okay. To make benefits happen, you have to claim the benefits. And to make the claims happen, we have to have a claims regime. We need to create a claims regime that works and we should, we should create the healthy claims regime that, that makes these processes happen. Um, one of the issues that, uh, that we always complain about is the fact that the government is doing nothing about supply chain and, and helping us grow raw materials. The plants are not available. I think that onus has to shift to industry. And we need to encourage the industry to be invested in agriculture and bring agriculture and, 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 and botanical products and in manufacturing together into one. And we need to really give that momentum in some form of making sure the industry takes that relationship and takes it forward. The policies need to support some of these changes. And I think where we, we sometimes have a little conflict on policies in, in, at various points of time. Uh, some of our departments function in silos. And I, 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 I say that in, in, in sitting in Delhi. And, and I'm taking the you know, liberty of saying that to you because I think that's how the change can come. Only if we talk about it, will the change come. That, we need, to, we need to break the silos and functions need to work together to make sure that, that, that conflicting uh, policies get removed and effective policies get implemented in, in establishing a growth tra trajectory for, the, uh, for, the, for, for these industries. These are future industries of the, of, the, of the country and I think we need to do something about making this work. So in summary, what we are saying is we need to understand the markets better. We, can we translate our books into English? Perhaps that can help some of the, the consumers buy this into, buy the concept. Can we promote more common facilitation centers for translations, creating market tools, story, stories in local languages? Why only English? Why not look at Japanese? Why not look at Korean? Why not look at, uh, you know, other languages that we can, we can sell this in? Um, can we support in building Brand India by creating awareness globally? Okay. Forming consortium of Arush nutraceutical bodies and councils with chiefs of each of these bodies in some ways. In bringing panels of exports from India and abroad for exchange programs and policies to, of knowledge to facilitate the exports. And how do, you make, how do we make Ayush our products mainstream products in India itself? In, the, in, in our own market, I don't think we, have, we really have large markets. How do we create that? And I think that needs to be something which we need to, to, to put some effort into. And this is what industry needs to bring to the, to the table. The startups, as uh, Dr. Chattopadhyay said, I think need to you know, take on these challenges, convert this into science, make it modern looking, and make those acceptable to the consumers in the market. Why is, now let's look at why in the last 15 years the nutraceutical markets has grown and what has, what has made it work, okay. I think what has happened in nutraceuticals is that science has been promoted, clinical evidence demonstrating product efficacy has been provided, significant investments have gone into building reliable, sustainable supply chains with traceability. Consumer preferences are understood and B2B2C communications are deployed. Significant investments go, have gone into research and development of products and product concepts, and consumer-friendly dosage forms and formulations have been implemented in, and made available. And I think these are some of the lessons we can actually adopt across the whole sector of, of, of the industry. What can the government do for the industry which is scientifically looking scientifically forward, research-backed products and policy interventions? Okay. It, I think that we need schemes for industry to develop farm linkages and PLI support to build capacity. 
Ayush processes to be modernized, marketed in English language and supported analytically. Emphasis on clinical and claims and consumer-friendly delivery formats. Marketing of the concept of building consumer awareness and removing conflicts in laws, tariffs, and, 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 and various areas of, of conflict that exist today. Okay. I think there, is, there are a couple of areas which I've identified, VDA, that's the Biodiversity Act and the GST, they need a little bit of attention. We need, to, we, we need to remove those conflicts that exist in these areas between what we need done and what we you know, are, are, are implementing to get done. This just gives you a quick overview of what OmniActives does. That's our company. Thank you very much. For more information, you can talk to me. Link out, look at my uh, views on LinkedIn, and you can, you can write to me as well if, if, if necessary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mariwala ji. Very precise uh, suggestions and uh, a snapshot of challenges. Thank you. And now I would like to invite uh, Vijendra ji, Vijendra Prakash ji from Himalay Wellness Company. And after this, we will take questions from audience. Thank you, Ministry of Food Processing Industry and Ministry of Ayush for inviting ADMA and I'm on behalf of ADMA, I'm the Vice President of South uh, India and I also head the regulatory affairs for Himalaya. So when I was teaching uh, you know, in colleges in my academic years after my PG, uh, more than 40 minutes I couldn't grab the attention of the students, you know, because 40 minutes is a max, you know, a human brain can accommodate the information. And we have four speakers into 40 minutes after a very good lunch and I'm ending the sessions. So please pardon me if you're feeling bored, but I'll try to be as entertaining as possible. Uh, well, we have looked at various sectors of the talks from startups to the basics of uh, Ayurved Ahar, very well, well uh, said by our professor and uh, all India Institute of Ayurveda. My industry colleague, uh, Mr. Sanjay, has put forth what are the actuals happening in the industry. Now, I'll just try to touch upon the topic of collaboration and partnership strengthening. You know, there's where the industry, you know, for example, Himalaya is 90 plus year old company. Why did we, uh, you know, just not stay with pharmaceutical? How did we exp you know, expand? What's our success story? I'll try to fill in some examples in the coming slides uh, of what I am going to speak. Now, as an industry, any industry, whether it's Ayush, food, pharma, the main important part is to identify your key stakeholders. So, who are your consumers? And who are your investors? Who are your suppliers? employees, that is your internal customers, local communities you are dealing with, especially when you are handling Ayush products, government and public bodies, the regulatory issues, whatever discussed, dealing with NPOs or NGOs, global environment, which is playing a very important role in the Western and European countries. So you just have to identify these areas when you think of a startup, when you think of a growing as an industry from a small to medium, from a medium to a large scale industry. And you will have to build a relationship with all these stakeholders. Now, irrespective of you like one, you don't like one, building up relationship, collaborating with these stakeholders is a very important point. You'll have to communicate with the stakeholders You'll have to collaborate with them. You'll have to partnership with them. For example, in Himalaya, we have collaborated with the farmers who are growing the herbs. We have entered into a buyback contract agreement. That's a type of collaboration. We work with almost I mean, 1,500 to 2,000 vendors. We have partnered with them during you know, our growth and with our growth, we'll continue to partner with them. How, how, is, how is it we do 
no for an example we done a facebook uh, video campaign of how our partners are impart- important along with the growth story of uh, you know himalaya uh, we have brought them on board we have shown online what are the quality management systems they are following indeed which affects my input material as well as my finished product this is how you can collaborate and make a success story now we are dealing with the uh, global stats of uh, nutraceuticals i was just uh, checking a uh, checking about what about herbal nutraceutical market it's currently in on in today's uh, you know market value it's about 55 billion growing at a rate of 6.8% cagr so you expect it to be around 123 billion in the next 10 years there's i'm only talking of herbal nutraceuticals so there is ample amount of opportunity so you'll have to think how do you collaborate with your different stakeholders how do you network most important point is how do you stay informed are you up to date you hear from my colleagues that should we dispense the dosage form as explained your in your you know classical text do can you convert this into a modern dosage form can you present it in the way the consumer looks across looks across because sanjay ji clearly told that the consumer is not looking just for the product but the benefits out of it so you'll have to present it in a way the consumer is looking forward you will have to be transparent very important you can't hide because the food market is growing and the lot of process materials today available so you'll have to be deal with all the stakeholders who are transparent and you will have to internally build confidence by working with them in a transparent manner you can't just share a piece of information expect him to supply everything the way you want it's not just not going to happen that way the trust building is a important factor next is innovation and invest in technology so unless you innovate you cannot grow as an industry you cannot partnership with your stakeholders you cannot network with people investing in technology so himalaya started as a pharmaceutical company but we have now f- major verticals we are into animal health we are into consumer products we are into food industries we are into baby care and we have expanded with a one more manufacturing facility in bangalore you know 60 kilometers away from our current facility and we are also opening up uh, you know newer uh, technology newer manufacturing facility to begin with in dubai so that we build more trust with the local consumers their local customers there so that's how we are trying to uh, you know grow uh, in terms of uh, market expansion the next is the regulatory compliance is very important part you know we are trying to maximize our compliance with the regulatory atmosphere in in in, in turn ayush ministry is also very supportive like you know anupam ji talked of ayush visas being uh, you know extended to the countries we have nabl accreditation given to the ayush hospitals we have insurances that have come in for the ayush treatment then you have ayush excel which has opened up very recently exclusively working for the export promotion so all these are you know the exchange between the industry and the ministry then talking of sustainability is a big challenge it's a big talked about subject when you reach out to the european and western markets so you have the biodiversity act in place in india so it's it's a topic where i would probably not want to talk too much because there are a lot of pros and cons discussion happening with the industry as well as the ministry however as an industry we are trying to comply as much as possible then you will have to you know have the data analytics ready what are you working you know with your stakeholders develop a platform to analyze this data work on systems like sap zrps various data are there you will have to work with ayush doctors to conduct clinical trials get the feedbacks get the doctors feedbacks get the consumer feedbacks what they are saying which will which is all going to make sense over a period of time one more important point is risk management how do you you know 
assess the risk management how do you handle it in case of any disaster happening suppose for example covid came in and suddenly there was a supply chain disruption and how can you manage in this situation do you have a plan b ready so these things have to be kept in mind then you'll have to have a continuous feedback mechanism you'll have to have an you know continuous improvement going on within your stakeholder you'll have to develop a strategy for that and community engagement it's very important that you engage with your communities as i said who are your stakeholders whether it's farmers engage with them partner with them whether it's vendors engage with them partner with them give them a sense of belonging that you care as an industry you care your vendors and the vendors have that confident in you so today the brand equity for himalayas we are in one of the top 50 brand equity so suppose if it comes to carbonated in industry in the food you only think of coke or pepsi how did they develop this brand so there's the collaboration and community engagement continuous engagement what the industries are doing what's the advantage india we have a large evolving semi processed ready to eat food category or manufacturers the cost of production in india is relatively low as much as 40% compared to the european countries you have supporting industry as well as a government with national institute like cftri cift national dairy research institute national research and development center so why can't the industry collaborate with these institutes the large number of players both organized and unorganized sector so how do you look into them as a potential partners potential vendors ayurved ahar already talked upon though it's at a very initial stage of notification i'm sure i heard that the experts have worked on ayurved ahar are sitting uh, sitting here so this notification can be worked upon to give it a more edge to the industry so that more industries start looking to bring out ayurveda ahara food products so with that i end my talk and uh, thank you once again bahut bahut dhanyawad vijendra ji we are extremely short of time uh, because the next session has to start here so uh, sorry we will have to skip the question answer session but if you have some queries or suggestions so you can uh, mail us at ayush@investindia.org.in so we'll take those questions and respond to them and now i would like to invite uh, indronil for the vote of thanks and this is uh, ayush@investindia.org in thank you thank you sanjay sir today uh, the discussion that we've had here and the session that we've had here it is uh, of course very important from a uh, india and a uh, global health perspective um we have been able to achieve a dialogue uh, through the panel here because the panel here represents uh, a confluence of and the best of clinical expertise uh the governance or the regulatory perspective innovation and startups and uh, the industry side for health wellness and nutraceuticals ayush as a sector is very difficult to define or to limit because uh, whenever we get into our sub sectors or the components of what is ayush so for example nutrition is something that uh, is also um converging with food and women and child development uh, medical value travel and wellness converges with tourism uh the larger mandate of why ayush uh, exists separately as a ministry and as a sector is of course public health if we talk about raw material we have to think of agriculture so uh and of course we are here today in a ministry of food processing event at world food india so this talks about the importance and the convergences that ayush has been achieving and needs to achieve going forward thank thank you to this uh, expert panel for very diverse yet very pointed inputs that gave us uh, direction and ideas today thank you for taking out the time to all of you and uh, uh, thank you sanjay dev sir for uh, playing uh, sutradhar so well today um, i would like to also thank our senior officers uh, from the ministry of ayush uh, ddg satyajit paul sir 
and uh, Director Vijay Lakshmi Ma'am for their uh, honor and, and their august presence here today. Thank you to all the attendees uh, for taking out the time and coming and attending. I would now request uh, DDG Satyajit Paul sir to please felicitate our speakers uh, for gracing us today. We'll start with uh, Dr. Vijendra Prakash uh, from Himalaya sir if you could. Thank you, sir, for uh, taking out the time and your presence today. Mr. Sanjay Mariwala uh, from Omni Active Technologies, who's uh, graced us with his presence today. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Shiv Harti from All India Institute of Ayurveda. Thank you so much for your presence today, sir. <laughs> Dr. Sakesh Chattopadhyay from FITT, IIT Delhi. Thank you very much for coming today, sir. <laughs> and Dr. Anupam Srivastava from uh, NIA Jaipur. Thank you very much for uh, coming in today, sir. and a media advisor to Ministry of Ayush, Sanjay Dev, sir. Please, sir. Thank you so much for 